Alright, I've got a simple scene set up here with a plane and a torus knot. Why a torus knot? Well, because they usually generate pretty cool effects when dealing with caustics. So for caustics, you need something to generate caustics, which will be the torus, something to receive caustics, which will be the plane, and then you also need a light. So I'm going to use a mental ray omni light. Place it about there. Now for the decay, you can choose to use none, but just for my personal tastes, I usually go with inverse square because it acts more like light does naturally because light follows an inverse square law. And then to get it to look right with the multiplier, general rule of thumb, if it looks good in the viewport, chances are it'll look good in the renderer. So I'm going to up this just a little bit. And maybe 3.0 looks good. And then with the Omni Light, by default, they produce pretty harsh shadows. So I'm going to go down to Area Light Parameters. Make sure Area Light Parameters is checked on. Sphere is OK. And set the radius to maybe something like 10. That'll soften up the shadows, and the samples will be how clean those shadows are. So we'll up this to maybe 10. Whereas if they're lower, the, uh, the shadows will look really jagged and noisy. So let me uh, now make sure your render is set to mental ray. And I'm using 3ds Max <coughs> 2009, by the way. Uh, to make sure you've got Mental Ray here. We'll go to Indirect Illumination. <coughs> and I'll just turn this down to low. And we'll give this a test render. Alright, I think it looks good. I think we'll use this to uh, test our caustics. Actually, what I'm going to do is pull this light out just a little bit. Right, that'll be good. Alright, so we're going to need a material for the torus knot. And what I'm going to use is glass physics phenomena. Default settings here. Apply it to the material. And then to see what this looks like, quick test render. Alright, it looks like a glass torus knot. Alright, now on to caustics. So in Indirect Illumination tab, go down to Caustics, Enable, and now down here, like I said, you need something to generate, receive, and alight. So you can click All Objects Generate and Receive GI and Caustics, but maybe you have some things in your scene that don't require it. So what I'm going to do is right-click this torus knot, go to Object Properties, Mental Ray tab, and click Generate Caustics. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the plane and make sure it's set to receive caustics and that'll be okay. Now under the caustics for the light properties, average caustic photons per light. The higher the value, the more accurate your caustic solution will be, the photon map will be at the expense of render time. So I'm just going to use 200,000 vice the default of 20,000. The decay, as the photons decay as they pass through, they're going to decay. 2.0 is uh, default for the inverse square. Uh, 1.0 is a linear decay. And then 0 is no decay at all. You'll find at 1.0, the effect is really extreme, and you get all these bright caustics. At 2.0, the linear or the uh, inverse square decay, the caustics are very subtle. So, we'll just try this setting for now, just to get a feel for it. Alright, not too bad. We can see the caustic effect here. Um, but I think we can get better. So, I'm going to turn this down to 1.7. And then we'll see how that looks for now. Alright, much more of an effect here. The photons have a little bit less decay, so they're a little bit more powerful when they come out of the uh, torus knot. So what I'm going to do is actually make that 1.8. Alright, so up here, your maximum number of photon sample. 
the lower the value, the sharper and harsh, more harsh the uh, caustics are going to be. The higher the value, the smoother they're going to be. So I'll do a test render at 10, and then we'll compare with 10, and then later 1,000. So here's 10. All right, much more difference here. The uh, caustic effects is the caustic effect is definitely sharper, and it's more noisy. So I made a clone of that. So let's change this to 1,000 and compare. All right, and clearly the effects are a lot smoother. So this was 1,000, and here is 10. So quite a difference there. I think I'm going to set it to maybe something like 50. And then this filter, change it to cone for sharper caustics or gauss for smoother. Um, but I think by default box looks all right. I mean, the effect you get from changing it to cone might not be that that different. It's kind of subtle. Um, what else? Oh, yeah, changing colors. So I'm just using the glass shader, but you can use ray trace to do this. Or you can just use the glass. It's nice and easy, and it's physically accurate. So I'm going to change this to red. And then we'll see how this looks. All right, pretty cool effect. Everything's red now. Basically, all we did is we changed it from clear to red. So I don't know. I think it looks kind of cool. I'm gonna make a clone of this. Another thing that's gonna affect your caustic effect is the geometry. So by default, this torus not as smooth. So if we just go to none can see here it looks all faceted so let's see how that plays a difference on how the caustics work all right definitely a change in effect all those different facets make the caustic effect a little bit different so this is the faceted one and here's the smooth one so Definitely quite a different effect. And I think that about does it. What you can do is you can throw in any number of lights that you want. Sometimes I'll throw in a skylight, drop the multiplier down real low to like something like 0.2 or whatever, just to give a little extra light to the scene. And then, so it's not just the one light. And then, let's make this a blue color. Alright. And there we have it. I think that sums it up. Hope you learned something. Take care.